All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the different modes of heat transfer. So first we have to understand what heat is. Okay, so heat is a form of energy that is transferred between two different objects. And the key is we're gonna have one object that's hotter, it's at a higher temperature than the other one, and heat is the transfer of energy from one object to another. So it's a, a two important things here with heat. It's a type of energy transfer Okay, so heat is always dealing with energy that's going to be transferred from one form, uh, from one uh, object to another. Okay, so we're only going to get heat transfer occurring if these objects are at different temperatures. If they're at the same temperature, that's what's called thermal equilibrium, and then there won't be any heat transfer. There has to be a difference in temperature in order for heat to be transferred between these two objects. So, second important point here, and this is super critical, heat always transfers from the hot object to the cold object. This is very important. So when you, let's say, are outside in the winter and touch something cold and your hand feels cold, that's not cold transferring into your hand from that object. It's really the heat leaving your hand and going into the object that you touched. Okay, so heat always goes from hot to cold and not the other way around. So if you touch something and it feels hot, that means that object is transferring heat to your hand. Whereas if you touch something that's cold, the heat is transferring from your hand to the object that's cold. Okay, so this is very important to understand. Heat always transfers from hot to cold. Okay, so if we look at a couple of examples here, if we've got this kind of division here between uh, some molecules that are at a high temperature, the red ones here, and some molecules that are at a low temperature, these blue ones here, how would heat transfer? Well, this indicates, right, we would go from hot to cold. So basically how this works and how heat transfer works in general is that the, po the particles, the atoms and molecules in whatever substance we're looking at are vibrating at a, and moving around at a certain speed, right? And that's what temperature tells us is how fast the particles are moving around. So if we have these particles that are moving around really fast in the hot part, and then we have these particles that are colder that aren't moving around quite as fast, basically how heat transfers is these particles move around, they bump into these particles and get them to move faster, and that's how we end up getting the temperature of this cold part to increase because the uh, particles in the hot part, they start moving around really fast, bumping into these, getting them to move faster, and that raises the temperature of those particles, okay? So the faster the particles are moving, the higher the temperature is gonna be, and when we get these cold particles to start moving faster by colliding with these uh, fast moving particles, then the cold particles end up moving faster and becoming at a higher temperature as well. We also look down here at an example, if we take a separate, two separate objects, right? If we have this hotter object here and this colder object here, and we put them into contact with each other, then eventually they're gonna meet somewhere in the middle at the end here, right? So if we take this hot object and this cold object and put them together. Again, the heat is gonna transfer from the hot object to the cold object, and eventually you can see they're gonna meet somewhere in the middle, right? As this heat transfers from the hot object to the cold object, the hot one gets cooler and the cold one gets hotter, right? And then eventually they meet in the middle, and again, this uh, when they meet at the same temperature, this is called thermal equilibrium. Okay, so once two objects have come to the same temp temperature, the heat, the, there's not gonna be any more heat transfer because they are at the same temperature. So that, that point there, once no more heat transfer is gonna occur because the temperatures of the two objects are the same, that's called thermal equilibrium. All right, so let's talk about the few different modes of heat transfer that we have. The first one is convection. So convection occurs when there's movement of air or liquid. So if we, if this is maybe a pot of boiling water or something like that, and if you ever boiled a pot of water, you've seen like, right, the bubbles come up to the top from the bottom, and it creates this kind of current, this, this movement of the water inside the pot. That is convection. When heat transfers, right, the, the hot uh, bubbles and the hot uh, water that's heated up by this uh, stove are gonna move upwards, and then the cold, uh, the cooler, uh, Part of the water near the top will replace it falling downwards and then it will get heated up and rise upwards so this creates what's called a convection current that is going to basically be the movement of this uh, this liquid or this could also happen with a gas um, and that's going to cause heat to transfer 
uh, that way. So the key with convection is it has to be a, some sort of movement of air or liquid. So if you see moving air or liquid, that's a good key that it's probably going to be convection. The next type of heat transfer is conduction. Conduction, the key is it happens by direct contact. Okay, so if you touch something, those examples that we talked about before where if you touch something cold outside in the winter, it feels cold, right? That is conduction, when you're directly contacting something. So here we have this, this person touching this hot pan. That is conduction of heat from the handle to the hand. And that's uh, because they're directly contacting the, uh, the pot. All right, so if we have direct contact, that's going to be conduction. And the last type of heat transfer we have here is radiation. And so radiation is kind of similar to conduction in that there's not direct contact, but there's a big difference. Conduct, or sorry, it's kind of similar to convection in that there's not direct contact, but it is different in one regard. If we remember back to convection, we need the movement of some air or liquid. Radiation can happen without the movement of air or liquid. It can happen through empty space. So if you've ever had a space heater in your house before, that's how these space heaters work, is that they radiate heat. They have this heating element, and the heat kind of radiates out into the air from this heating element. It would heat you up whether there was wind. Uh, well, inside your house, there's not going to be wind. So it doesn't, it doesn't rely on the movement of air or or liquid, it can travel through empty space. So if you're just sitting in your house with a bunch of air in your house and the heat uh, from the space heater can radiate through that without the movement of air or liquid currents, that's gonna be radiation. This is also how the sun's heat reaches Earth, right? Because the sun being very far away from Earth, but all, those, all that heat from the sun ends up transferring through space, through empty space to get to Earth. So that is radiation. Okay, so now that we've done the three modes of heat transfer, I want you to pause the video and look at this picture here that demonstrates three different modes of heat transfer in one setting. And I want you to try and explain, or just make sure you can justify why each of these one uh, modes of heat transfer is labeled, why they are representative of the things that they are labeled here, right? So why is the movement of this water inside the pot. Why is that a demonstration of convection? Why is the guy touching the handle? Why is that uh, conduction? And then why is the fire radiation? All right, so try and come up with an example or uh, an explanation of why each of these uh, methods of heat transfer is what they are, all right? So a uh, quick explanation of this. Uh, we talked about the pot of boiling water before when we talked about convection. So because when this pot of water gets heated up, there's gonna be these currents of liquid inside the pot, that's going to be convection because we have movement of air or liquid. Why is this conduction? Conduction occurs with direct contact. So we have this guy directly touching the handle. That means that it's going to be conduction. And radiation. The heat from this fire is traveling through empty space, right? You, if you went and sat near a fire, you would feel its warmth, whether there was wind or uh, any movement of air or not, right? Because it radiates through empty space or through air, regardless of the movement of the air itself. All right, so thanks for watching this video on heat transfer, and I'll see you in the next one.